Hi guys, it's Dr. Shark here at Club City Veterinary Hospital in Dove Creek Animal Hospital here with my dog Rumble. I'm just here to let you guys know that April is Pet First Aid Awareness Month and I'm just going to show you some pet supplies that I do keep in my Pet First Aid kit for Rumble and Friday. Um, first thing that I really think that you guys should have is the phone number for our hospitals um, and also the phone numbers for the emergency hospitals, Upstate Veterinary Specialties and Northway Animal Emergency Clinic. Those are the ones that are closest to us. Other things that you guys should have is some information about your pet, especially their name, any of the records that you might be able to keep, um, just so that we have pertinent information going to the emergency hospital since they haven't ever seen them, um, and an up-to-date rabies uh, certificate just so that they know that they are up-to-date. Um, other things physically that you can have are some bandaging supplies in case your dog or cat gets a little wound and it keeps bleeding. I always like to use absorbent gauze pads that you can kind of apply pressure to. And then I really like this vet wrap. Um, it's just a piece of uh, bandaging supplies. I like pink, it's my favorite color. So that's why I got this one. Um, but it does come in multiple different colors and it actually just sticks to itself and not the pet. So it's really easy to remove. There's also some bandaging tape that you can use. You just don't want to put too much pressure on it just so that it doesn't kind of cut off circulation, but just enough to stop the bleeding to get to the hospital. Um, also some bandaging scissors are really neat. Uh, these are just a little bit less uh, sharp, so they're not going to hurt the pet. So you don't want to use like a regular scissor itself, but these are really nice to have on hand so that you can cut the bandage off or if you need to trim anything else on your pet. Other things you can do for an event of emergency would be to have a thermometer, a rectal thermometer, which is really just an oral thermometer for humans. Um, but you want to have this with some sterile lube or just some KY jelly just so that you can insert it into the rectum if you guys feel comfortable doing it. You want to definitely dictate that this is the pet thermometer. So what I usually do is um, for my own dog from Bull and Riot, um, I usually write their names on it so that I know that I do not put this in my mouth. So that would be really gross. <laughs> um, but the normal dog temperature and cat temperature is usually about 99.5 to 102. So anything higher, you would want to get a little concerned. Anything lower, we definitely are concerned since that would be hypothermia. Um, but this is a really nice thing to kind of have on hand to know if they are running a fever. Um, a couple other basic supplies that you can have is some hydrogen peroxide so that if they are vomiting or if they pretend, well, to induce vomiting, I'm sorry. Um, and basically this will kind of cause too much bubbles in their stomach and will cause them to vomit if they ingested something that they shouldn't have, which most dogs tend to do that. Um, so you would want to keep tablespooning it in, so put it on a little spoon and kind of keep pouring it into the dog's mouth until they do vomit. You don't want to put it too much in there, um, but if you have any questions on this, please do not hesitate to call us. But if you just have a bottle on hand, that would be really helpful so you don't have to run to the store at that time. Other things that you can have on hand that we could definitely get you guys if you're interested is some ear cleaner, um, just in case your dog or cat has some dirty waxy ears. I really like this ear cleaner, it's got a cucumber and melon smell to it, um, and also these little um, cotton balls are better to clean dogs and cats ears rather than q-tips because they, they have a different ear canal and we don't want to rupture anything inside. So basically what you would do is just kind of pour the solution into the ear and then clean it out with these cotton balls, but to have those on hand are really good for any potential ear infections um, or even just waxy dirty ears. Um, another thing that you could have on hand that we have here are these little tick removers. It is definitely tick season now um, as the weather is getting warmer, but these are little devices that you can actually scoop underneath the tick and twist them out and pull them out, which will make it a lot easier so you don't have to rush over here with uh, an emergency tick that's attached to your animal, but we will definitely remove those for you if you need it. Um, but we do have these here and they have little special instructions right on the back of it. Um, another thing that I have in my essential kit is some nail trimmers so that I can trim my dog's toenails. The thing is, nail trimmers is they do potentially can quick your dog's nail, which is that little blood supply in the, the pink of their nail, kind of like on my nail where it's the pink and then my white. So 
I always like to have quick stop on hand and quick stop actually kind of cauterizes the vessel so it kind of stops the bleeding so it won't hurt the dog or anything like that. It's just this little septic powder and they do sell it in uh, pet stores and we have it here as well. Um, a few other things that are on my table here are some gloves just in case something gets really dirty or even like a slip lead that you can put on your dog just in case um, he's trying to get away from you and you're trying to do something to him. It's just really nice to have this to be available or even you can put it around the muzzle to kind of help restrain him so if he doesn't try to bite you or something for like people. Um, other things for like pain and stuff, you can do like an ice pack to have on hand and also like a heating pack. I really don't like the heat pads itself because they, what they do is actually kind of sit there too long with them. So I like to have something that will dissipate the heat. So I like to fill an old sock, dirty sock or something, or well, clean sock, but an old sock filled with rice. And then you can reheat that multiple times because the rice will kind of accept the waves of the microwave and then dissipate the heat over the time that the dog needs the heating pack. Um, thanks for watching. And if you guys have any questions or concerns, please definitely give us a call. Um, and if there is a true emergency, definitely give us a call as well at Glove City Veterinary Hospital or Dove Creek Animal Hospital.